This hangout is live. Guess I better pull up a thingy here. YouTube. Find Mr. Matt Rhodes fishing. There goes the advertisement. Now, let's see. If you want me to look up Matt Rhodes, Mega 8. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yep, we're live. Easy peasy. All right. Everyone should be able to chat. Matt Rhodes, Mega 8. <laughs> well, I'm about to mute that. Boom. Yep, we're live. Easy peasy. Sam Miller's in here. A new Chatterbait rod slash reel. You know what I use for my Chatterbait rod slash reel setup? Since we're already asking questions, I'm just going to start it. I use the Royale Legend and uh, and a 7... X seven six extra heavy frog and rod from casting. Oh. I don't know why, but I can I get a better hookup ratio with a sturdy rod on the China rate. Really? Yeah, I do way I, better. You're gonna make fun of me because you always say all I use is spinning reels, which is not true, but they are more of my go-to stuff. But yeah, definitely, definitely a spinning reel, uh, twelve pound test, uh, and I'm gonna use mono, keep it up on top more, and. Uh, and just a medium to medium heavy uh, casking spinning rod. Yeah. That's 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 the way I roll. We got eight I bet watching. You I have one tied up right now. Eight people watching. Woo medium heavy at moderate is actually a good rod, all around rod. That's what you should use. I I'm a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, you are crazy. Yeah, I agree with the the legend. I like throwing uh, throwing those with the legend on a medium heavy rod. Fast action. I like the fast action rods for my for anything top water. Uh, when I do regular swim baits like weightless and stuff, I like the stealth. I don't know why I can feel the bait better. But all right, let's start it up. Welcome guys. Welcome to the show. We got. Let's see how many viewers we got. I am got sharing eight. the link on Facebook right now. We got eight viewers. We're gonna go through talk about how we're gonna be at iCast. I got all the. If you look at the description. I got what boots we're going to be at. You guys can come visit if you're going to be at iCast. We got everything going on. And we're going to bring in some Team Cast King members tonight and let them talk to you guys about their favorite setup and what, or what they use and what they like from Cast King. And then we'll let them answer a question from you guys. So we'll shout the questions. I'm going to write them down so we can answer them later. We're going to have, we're, we're going to have people in pretty active in the chat that's not actually going to be on the screen and they'll be able to kind of answer questions if we if it kind of gets jumbled out or, or we miss something so yeah ask away and if we on uh, actually on camera don't see you or see your question ask again or maybe somebody in the comment section from uh, the cast King crew will be there to answer you so share Definitely. it guys let's share and, this link let's, get, it out of let's, post. let's get more people in here Tom's going to be in the chat all night. You know who Tom is? He's our marketing guy, Cast King, and he's going to – he has a little surprise he's going to share um, sometime tonight, so pay attention to the chat also. All right, let's see. All right. Uh, as far as Dobbins or Denali goes, I've never used either, dude. Sorry, I haven't. I've used a lot of Bass Pro. I've used Abu Garcia. I've used a lot of other things, but I have, in all honesty, I've, I've switched. I've actually put a lot more money in my pocket and a lot more fishing gear uh, and usable, awesome fishing gear with casking stuff. Really have. I could actually go down and take a picture of my bass boat, and all you're going to see on it is casking. But but both are, are, are good rods. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. So, do we want to go ahead and bring anybody in? Anybody special here? What do we got going on there? Uh, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and we'll swap to um, 
John. John's been on here. I think he's been on the team longer than I have. He's been on there with AJ, and uh, he he catches this huge catfish down in the rivers and some actually some pretty big bass on the rivers because I don't catch big bass like that on these rivers over here. And he's going to tell you guys a co couple of his little setups he likes and how he uses it, and we'll throw him a question. So, John, yeah, you, you can go ahead. We got a, we got a, whoever wants to answer this, John coming in, uh, Dane or Matt, we've got uh, Clifford Williams asking, I'm having trouble fishing saltwater right now. I'm not a saltwater guy. This is for you guys. Now, what do you all recommend for me to do? Are you using a try and live bait or artificials is is the big thing. Um, you know, if you want to fish the grass flats or, you know, the creek channels. I like to use, um, like, the gulf shrimp weightless like you would on a worm. Uh, it seems to work really well around the grass, just kind of working it real slow. That's usually the best bet for me. So you, let's see here. Uh, you know, Clifford, I'm honestly gonna have to ask, what are, what are you fishing before I answer that? Are you are you inshore fishing the flats? Are you waiting? Are you from a kayak? Are you from a boat? Are you fishing surf? Um, you know, what kind of fishing are you doing? Um, that way we can we can kind of give you a more specific answer to a specific area. Don't go to Paris. What? Don't, don't go to Paris? Don't go to Paris, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently there's something going on in Paris. I'm on to see what people are writing and it uh turned up the silly commercial. <laughs> well, all I know is I ain't going to Paris. So Yeah, I'm not going to Paris either. I heard the fish right. was not really good over there. <laughs> Alright, John. What's what's one of your favorite uh Setups, rods, or reels, or what you want to talk about. I think I got a picture ready for one of the ones you said you're going to talk about. Um, my favorite is actually, as funny as it sounds, is I like the uh, the Cast King Ranger Travel Rod. It's a really good universal rod. It's a six foot six rod, but it only goes down to you know a foot long. But it's got a medium action. You know, I use this rod for everything from when a little beetle spin. Um, the uh, all the way up to throwing you know big topwater plugs. It's it's been a really good universal rod and ranger reel. I bought three of those things. I, I really enjoy those ranger rods. Yeah, I mean a lot of people look at it and they're like, oh man, it's just a collapsible rod or junk. You know, a lot of the old. Mm -hmm. Are we having uh, audio issues? Yeah, we're, we're having technical. It starts to lag a little bit when we got a lot of people in. If you want, Jay, try to turn your video off and turn your mic on, and I'll throw the picture up for the Sharky, too. Well, Jay is having some technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, that ain't good. But uh, that that Ranger Trial Rod's pretty nice. You can get them in different sizes over on Amazon.com, and it's a really great price for them. And he was also going to talk about here. I'll put it on my screen so we can share the picture. He's also going to talk about the Sharky Two here. And the great thing about the Sharky Two is it's waterproof, dunk proof. Um, I think Shane's even he's done a dunk test on YouTube and he put it in salt water and fresh water and it still works great afterwards. And that's one of my favorite reels. I think I have the same exact setup John was just showing the Sharky Two and the Ranger Rod. No, I haven't had a chance to get my hands on the Ranger Rod. I can't wait to look at it physically when we get to uh, ICAST this year. Um, tell me about it. I mean, what would you compare it to for somebody just looking at the pictures of it in the video? I mean, obviously, it's a collapsible rod. What are you going to compare it to as far as, as uh, I mean, how much flex does it have? Is it more stiff? Is it going to be something that when you set the hook, you got to yank hard? Or, I mean, give us kind of some of the rundowns from somebody who actually owns it and used it. 
All right, let's uh, let's unshare over here. We're both over here multitasking. And looking <laughs> yeah, at I'm multitasking. Sorry, here. I'm over here answering. I'm looking uh, at for a couple guys in the. Uh, what what I like is if you there's two versions. You got the Black Hawk, which is meant for fresh water, and it's a little more flimsy, a little more medium action, and it's meant for that light light duty, light bait tackle. And the Ranger Rod, which is I use for bass fishing also, but it has more of a backbone, and I catch redfish with it. And it's and I think that's the do two difference. You're gonna have more of a sturdy saltwater ready portable rod, or you're gonna have a freshwater one. And it's super stiff, the the saltwater one, the Ranger. All right, we'll we're gonna skip Jay, and uh, we'll head over. Well, she's not in yet, so we'll skip Maddie for now, if you want. Well, Dane, you can introduce the the next guy. Uh, Abdul. Abdul. Um, we got Paul Lopez here. Great guy. He's been a member of Team Eposidon for a while now with Cast King and Mad Bites. This guy works magic from the kayak and is here to talk to you guys about a few different products that are his personal favorites to use out and about and different applications. Paul? What's going on, man? Uh, right now, uh, my favorite uh, reel is going to be the uh, Stealth. I love the Stealth. The reel is super smooth. <clears throat> it's got 12 plus 1 ball bearings. It's got uh, 10 pounds of uh, max drag. And it just casts a mile. I love the reel. I got a $150 reel that's just collecting dust. It doesn't even compare to the Stealth. Um, I I fished it in a really heavy cover. It it, it works great. I love it. Um, let's see, I've got it right here. Now, you on this the casking stealth. For people that don't know, isn't this a carbon fiber reel? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's right, carbon fiber. I don't know if you can see it. Hey, I'll put it up. You go. Yeah, we've yep. got it. I think Matt's got it up on there. Yeah, I, had a, I had a picture up, but you can show yours. Lightweight. <clears throat> and I got it paired up on the uh, Casking Phantom Rod. It's a uh, medium heavy, medium heavy power. And uh, the thing is great. Gotta love it. Yeah, I love my stealth. I like to put light line on it because I do my swim base, like I said earlier. It, it throws a light lure, like, super far, super nice. I got 20, uh, 30 pound test braid on it, the casking braid. Another thing I love about casking is their braid. Super smooth. Haven't had a problem yet. Casts a mile. That Mega 8 is really nice. I love my Mega 8, the black and the black. <laughs> That's one thing I haven't uh, tried at the Mega 8. Dying to try that out. I got got the Mega 8 spooled up on this thing. Uh, Triton Dualis Cascade. 50 pound, 300 meters. All of it went on this thing, the 5000 series. And this stuff has been awesome for shark fishing. Sorry, guys. I got booted for a second. <laughs> That's fine. I think I booted myself. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm to get back in the mix here. What do we got? Yeah, Casking started out with their their fishing line, and then when I joined in, they were making reels, which were great. And they're going every year more and more and more stuff, and it's amazing. iCast is going to be awesome. You're going to see so much cool product from Casking. How many of our, our viewers on there? We've got 12 viewers right now, which, which by the way, let's get some more viewers in here, guys. Share the link at the bottom on the YouTube feed. Get it out there. Tell your friends. Go into some other pages. Let's get it out there. Let's get some more people in here and talk a little bit more. But how many of you guys have been to iCast? Do you guys even know what to expect? Has, is anybody interested about iCast, what's going on, and some of the products that, that are featured at iCast? I mean, it is by far one of the biggest, most craziest fishing shows I've ever been to in my life. I mean, it, it is, it's surreal. It really is. To me, I cast like the Catalina wine mixer, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Les, are you going to iCast? Les Larson. 
<clears throat> Cliff Williams likes drop shot. <laughs> oh wait, no, he's talking to Dane about uh, working grass for a rig. Yeah, I'm I'm multitasking for us here. Yeah, no problem. All right. And if you guys don't know Paul, we'll introduce him a little bit more. He is like the Instagram king. I put all the links in the description. I put his Facebook page, Lunker Lopez. I think it's Lunker Lopez on Instagram. Lunker Lopes. Or Lunker, yeah. Lunker Lopes. There you go. Paul, well, tell us, tell us about. Uh, have you? What's your? What's it been like using? You said you'd really like to use the stealth. Uh, you know, you, you. What are some of the features other than the fact that it's carbon fiber? It's lightweight, super smooth. And do you have any any stories, you know, recently about taking it out and fishing with it? I mean, has it has? What are some of the benefits you've seen from it? Other than not breaking the bank from purchasing it too, because they're not that expensive. They're actually really affordable. Paul, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> I think Paul's out. I think we've got somebody else ready to come in if Paul's having problems. We can go back to Jay. Yeah, Jay, what's going on, Jay? How you been? Dude, I've been having some issues. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> we got a lot of guys in this group chat now, so it, it happens, man. You should tell us, Jake, what, what's your setup you like to use on those big cats? Um, on the, the big catfish, I've been using the uh, the Rover, um, new Rover reel with 40-pound braid, um, using just kind of a easy, um, easy with uh, uh, using a swivel and a big old circle hook, um, live brim, just throwing it out there, letting it kind of set under the bottom trying to uh, get it underneath those trees and whatnot that are hanging over. They uh, they have a tendency to big cat just hang out under those trees all the time that are laying in the water on um, those big drop-offs. Dude, I took a guy on the golf course the other day, and he hooked up on a seven-pound catfish on a Cinco. <laughs> I've actually caught some big, um, the big catfish on, like even fishing little beetle spins for brim. They'll come out of nowhere and just nail them. You guys see what Tom's posting over there? He says the new still sixteen and a half pound drag, carbon fiber drag. It's gonna be pretty sweet. No way. Heck yeah! I cast is already got some little secrets coming out already in our live chat coming out. Nice. Nice. Sixteen and a half pounds of drag. You can catch a lot of large. You can pull fish some. That. Tom, this fish this new up, up, that. this new uprated and upgraded stealth that's going to be introduced at ICAST, sixteen point five pounds carbon fiber drag. Is it going to look any different? Is it going to be on the exact same platform? What can we expect? Or is it still a little too hush hush? Let's see what Tom gets us in the comments here. Well, Tom's answering uh, Jay. When you're out there fishing for your catfish, what is your primary bait of choice? And do you do you throw it out and let it sit? Do you let it, you know, kind of coast down the current? I mean, what do you do? Do you retrieve it, depending on what you're using? What is your tips for the catfishing? Because you've been pretty successful in the last couple of months uh, on uh, on your catfishing adventures. Yeah, um, actually, it, it's kind of funny because the catfish, you need to change up the baits on it every once in a while. The uh, Early in the spring, when the catfish are chasing uh, shad, they a lot of the shad will spawn in the rivers. So the catfish will chase the shad up, and then they'll kind of just trap them in these deep pools or the rock channels and stuff. Um, but right now, the shad are gone, so the catfish are actually hunting for big bluegills. <laughs> So that's uh that's been my bait the last couple months is just running blue eels for a cat man. I just run them whole, <coughs> whole do three hook, inch. Do you hook them through the back fin? How do you hook them? Actually, I hook them right through the eyeballs. Really? Yep. <laughs> right through the eyeballs. Now, 
uh, one thing that's crazy, like out here in Arizona, uh, <laughs> I fish the Salt River for catfish and stuff, and we use water dogs, crawdads, liver, shrimp. Of course, we let the shrimp or liver stink up. Um, and and I think the best bait is is either shad, water dogs, but of course bluegills. Now people always tell me that I'm mean and cruel when I fish with a water dog or a salamander because I cut their feet off, I cut their legs off. And everybody's like, that's so mean, like just just as mean as running a big old hook through their head or their back. Yeah, that's real horrible. But uh, to me, it keeps them from going down into the rocks. They'll get in there and they'll crawl and they'll pull themselves in the rocks. But it, is there any reason why you hook them straight through the eyeball? <laughs> I hook my bluegill through the back just so they have more of a swimming action and there's more, more presentation to them. But why do you hook them through the eyeballs? Well, I'm, the main reason I hook them through the eyes is because it's the thinnest part of their body. And with the big circle hooks that I use, they just kind of, they hook up better, it seems like. And they'll stay alive a lot longer, too. I mean, you hook them through the eyes, and it doesn't affect the way they live. <laughs> Other than they need a, a walking stick now, right? No, no, you don't, have, you don't actually put it through their eyeballs themselves. You just hook it through the socket <laughs> in front of their eyes. So they can right. still see. You know, and if you actually, if you don't catch anything, you can always take the hook out and just let them go, and they'll swim away and be fine, so. Nice. Now, Tom, he responded back to us on the, uh, on that uh, stealth, the new updated stealth. Uh, he said they found a way to jab more drag into the same frame. So, basically, it's going to be the same platform, same small, low-profile, lightweight platform that the stealth was originally created on with uh, a little bit more uh, oomph, I guess you could say, when it comes to the drag and, and reeling in a big old bag. <laughs> What do we got, guys? What do we got going on, Matt? Um, I don't know. That's, I like this question that he he says. Any new Mad Bite lures for iCast? What's funny is I'm waiting to see that too. There's some things we don't even know. You know what? There was a Mad Bite lure. Um, it was the first year at iCast. It was a Mad Bite prototype lure, and we and I went up and uh, we had another teammate go up with me. And we had that lure. It was a jointed swim bait lure. It was a big one. And it was, again, like the shape of a bluegill or a sunfish. And uh, we were on the casting tank. And I kept distracting myself. It was the first time I ever picked up that lure and I started playing with it, you know, and casting. And, man, I couldn't hardly concentrate on, on talking about, you know, the product or, or coming by the booth and everything and checking out what we had to offer because I was just so impressed with the way this thing swam. And uh, it was the only one that we had had there. And you know, you you cast it and it would swim, and you could reel it, you retrieve it nice, and then stop and give it a twitch, and it would swim a certain way. You twitch it one more time, and it would turn around, and you twitch it again and go back. I mean, it was the craziest thing. It was fantastic, and I was so excited to see that lure. Uh -oh. Sorry, I was so excited to see that lure come out, and we ended up selling it. There was a, a young kid come through, and he just wanted it so bad, and we ended up selling it to him uh, at at the end of the show. And to this day, I've never seen it come back, but uh, I, I would kill for that thing. So Mad hopefully Bites, Mad Bites can have some good stuff. Yeah, they're going to come out with more than just lures, too. They're coming out with fish finders. They're coming out with pliers. Everything you can think of, they're coming out with all kinds of stuff. Oh, you mean like this? <laughs> yeah, just like that one. <laughs> hey, what do we got there? I see a Cardinals hat in the background. Well, hold on, Jay's holding up a Mad Bite lure. What does he got here? Uh oh. This is actually my favorite jerk bait that they have. This thing tears up the striper and the bass in the spring. I think I have that same lure, but uh, I use it. I try to jerk it fast and use it as top water. Yeah, you can. <laughs> it, but it, when it when you're jerking the top water and you stop, it'll kind of just flutter down real slow, and that's when I get all my big strikes on it. But it does work good for a top water, just walking the dog back and forth. Nice. No, Phantom, I haven't shark fished since we've shark fished. I've been waiting for you to come back down so we can shark fish again. I've been researching Maybe spots, you though. Phantom will just have to come down here to Central Florida, and we'll all have to go then, huh? <clears throat> Dude, when we went, he was out there for like an hour before I showed up. And five minutes after I showed up, I had like a nice 32-inch redfish. And then after that, a shark fish pretty much like spooled my reel. A shark just said, it's like, it was on fire. Like the spinning reel was just burning drag, and it was like smoking. It's crazy. Uh, speaking of other things that Mad Bites is coming out with, 
Oh. Face masks. Ah, yes. I love the face mask. Look at, look at Dane. Okay, no, yeah, leave it like that. No, go back up. <laughs> there we go. Do the rest of the whole presentation that way. <laughs> it looks like that guy from that one movie with the black moves around his face. <laughs> Here, you know what? We'll just go ahead and do the rest of it like this. I'll take my Mad Bite uh, face mask and my uh, Cask King sunglasses. Now, what what glasses did you get there, Dane? I've got the uh, Swatch. Tell me about them. Give me the four one one, because I I got a different pair. So. You know, these things, uh, a lot of time whenever I go out and I buy sunglasses and I'm trying them on, one of the first things I'm looking for is comfort, just overall comfort. I mean, obviously, do they work? How's the polarization? How's all that function for me? But how comfortable are they? And a lot of times I end up getting pinched behind the ears a little bit too uncomfortably, and after about an hour, two hours of wearing them, end up with a headache from it. But... Um, these, I, I gotta say, they're they're lightweight, they're flexible, and uh, don't get that nasty pinching. And um, down here in Florida, we've got a lot of various water types and water colors that you can you can fish from one area to the next. And the polarization on on these has been amazing, from going through clear water all the way down into murky water, and still cutting the glare, and still getting through it, and getting the job done. Uh, another thing I've, I've quite enjoyed about them is, you know, most of the time when you get a pair of glasses or sunglasses and you get smudges on them, the oils from your fingers or water droplets on them, you have a hard time getting them, getting them clean. You end up just moving those smudges around. And uh, with these, you know, Casking was, was great enough not only to give a hard case with them, but they also give you nice microfiber cloth. And uh, I got to say, one another thing I love about these is a pair of sunglasses that actually gets clean from water spots instead of just moving all the gunk around. And um, they're shatterproof, they're lightweight, and um, the materials that they're made out of is the, uh, the TR-90 plastic, which is comparable to, like, OSHA's ANSI Z87 sunglasses as far as being... Rated for shatterproof and uh, just overall protection. So, being a safety guy, I also love that feature on them. I went with the with the uh, the old school kind of like the blade style uh, glasses here because of the interchangeable lenses. Um, they've got some clear lenses. Uh, kind of, they're not exactly the most approved uh, for for all safety requirements, but I mean, they definitely will keep debris out of your eye. The main thing is going to keep, like, especially if you're fishing at night, you can still wear a clear lens for guys that don't wear glasses. Um, you can still at least put on a clear lens or a lens that's going to enhance your vision and keep a fish hook out of your eye. I think everybody has seen the pictures or known somebody of somebody getting a fish hook in the eye. But another cool quality that, that I liked about the glasses with the interchangeable lenses, I mean, for one, they give you like four or five different pair of lenses. It's killer. But then they also give you these little bitty frames right here that will pop in the inside of your yep there we go pop in the inside of your uh, of your frames and I'm getting ready to drop mine off with you know to get my prescription filled in them because you know if you've ever looked to see what it costs to send out to get a pair of custom designer sunglasses you know with a with a prescription uh, lenses it's it's outrageous it is flat outrageous man so I'm getting these guys filled and I am going to be able to see finally with sunglasses on while I'm fishing. I can't wait. I haven't, I've been blind for about the past four or five years now and, and I'm excited to be able to see again. You know, it's, it's going to be exciting. And that's one cool thing. And all of this under 30 bucks. Under $30 for the, for the glasses, the frames with, you know, five different lenses, uh, the frames for, for prescription lenses. I mean, it's, to me, that was, it's insane. Casking's coming out with not just rods, reels, line. Um, you know, you've got to think, you know, the, the holders, You've got apparel now, and now they're getting into the optics department. That's to me that was it's crazy. 2016 is a big year for casting. 
figure. We have a couple of questions we can answer over here, and then we'll go to Shane and what he's going to talk about. But hey. Fishing in Columbus says Shane. difference in the iCast braid and the 8 plus. I think the only difference is the 8 plus is usually 60 pounds or higher. Isn't that right, AJ? Um, okay, so I'm sorry. I was responding to somebody. Um, the, the, eight plus strand, eight. the 8 plus strand compared to the regular braid. Like okay. They're both regular uh, braids, the super power braid, but one's 8. I think he's talking about the Mega 8. The, uh, um, the Mega 8 is all, all of its 8 strand. And yeah, eight from its its smaller diameter all the way all the way up to your larger. Uh, I do believe it goes all the way up to eighty pound. Um, and it has that yeah. coating that goes through your guys a lot smoother, so you don't well, get a lot eight, of that. The Max Thin eight are both, eight. They're both just eight eight strands, whether it's the Max Thin or the Mega Eight. No, he's talking about the regular, the old school, the the Super Braid. Oh, the Super Braid, uh, which I don't have any up here. And then the second question, I hope that answers his question. <laughs> second one is, how do those casking sunglasses compare to Costas? I don't have a pair. Does Shane, do you have a pair of Costas? I had a pair of Costas with glass lenses, and I hated them because they were so heavy on my nose. Uh, they looked nice. They were stylish, but <clears throat> the glass lenses are a lot heavier than the polycarbonate lenses. Um, I also have a pair of Smiths, and these were my... my go-to fishing glasses, but the, the lenses just don't get clean, like Dane said. Um, there's actual, if you look really close, the the chromatic pop is starting to, to chip off of it. Uh, it's got, like, little um, blurry lines that go through it. It's just, it's not what I expected out of a $180 pair of sunglasses. Yeah, I've, I've tried some Coast. I don't have any of my friend has them, and he, that's exactly, they're always, they seem a lot heavier than than the casting ones. And I have the Swatches too, and they're super light. Mm -hmm. Another, another <laughs> and nice thing about like having, having glass, you know, having plastic compared to glass is, you know, you, you, you still run it, even though it's glass, and you think it's going to be strong and it's shatterproof and all that good stuff, you still run into a lot of instances where you can have something pop back and hit you in the eye. Next they don't glass. make. <laughs> I don't. I don't like. I don't like the idea of having glass right there. They don't make safety glasses out of glass. No. Exactly. All right, and we brought James in here, and he's going to talk about um, what he enjoys about Cast King, and then he's already answered a question, but we might make him answer another question. And you can go ahead, Zane. What's your favorite setup, or what are you getting into? I know you're getting into the fly side of things, and you can just talk about some of that if you want. <laughs> I can't wait for Shane to talk about this because I know nothing about this, and he was the first yeah. to get it. And as yeah. soon as he put his video out, and his video was basically this was Shane's video right here. Uh, it's cool, and I don't know what it does. <laughs> this is the drag, you know. And I was just like, I don't. I, I was with him. I'm like, I don't know what it is either. But I went instantly. I ran to my computer. Jumped on Amazon and I ordered one. I swear that's exactly how it went down. So Shane, I know since then, while I was waiting for my shipping, you got a rod, you got some line, you got the things pulled up, and you got out and caught some fish with it. Tell me. I don't care about anybody else. Tell me. I want to know. <laughs> All right. So I, I bought the three weight slash four weight, which is what the numbers on the side mean. Um, I bought the three slash four weight. Uh, so it's not three quarter. Not three quarter. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I, as you mentioned, I did the video on it. Um, the whole thing that got the, the whole uh, brainstorming idea that got this started was, you know, being a noob to fly fishing. Um, so I believe Jay and I, uh, we both uh, got into it. We both got our reels. Um, and the next step after that was getting line getting a rod, and then going fishing with it. So I went to the Orvis um, shop in the Woodlands, Texas, and I got some line. I bought a couple flies, which are a lot more expensive than I thought they were going to be. Uh, I ended up spending probably about 100 bucks at that store. Um, and then after that, I ordered a, an Akuma reel, th uh, excuse me, an Akuma three-weight rod off Amazon. It was like a $70 rod just to kind of, you know, throw the reel on there and see what the fly fishing craze is all about. So 
Um, after practicing a couple casts in my yard, I went to a local pond, and uh, I didn't have to cast too far to get onto the, the sunfish there, but I ended up catching probably a dozen sunfish, and I was hooked. Uh, the next day, I took it out on the kayak, and it was a totally different story. Um, learning to cast from a kayak is, you know, it's, it's a whole other art form. Uh, when it comes to fly fishing, you have to make sure your deck's clear. You have to make sure there's plenty of space behind you to, to back cast. Um, and the biggest thing was landing a fish. Um, once I, I had three blow-ups on the little top water popper that I bought, I hooked I hooked two. I know I hooked two. And I just, I just posted an Instagram video of one where I'm kind of like reaching up like this and the line's falling all over me. And uh, it was just a mess. So, well, see, isn't, isn't fly fishing, uh, from what I've seen now, you have, because everybody looks and you've got this, or as I've seen it, you've got a mile of line. You know, guys will sit there and they'll be casting and they're doing that back cast, like you say. That's more of like getting your placement of where you want it and you're getting it out a little further, a little further. And you finally let it kind of just lay out there. But don't you have like a mile of line on there? And you don't actually reel the line, you pull it towards you, don't you? Yeah. You like pull it out as you pull up the slack? Yeah, it's 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 the line. Line. Um, depending on how far you're casting, that's how much line you want to have out on the deck around you. And you're just using that weight, the weight of the line, and doing what's called, you know, hauling, which is kind of holding the line and then pulling it on your back cast. And then you can let it go, and then a double haul is you kind of pull it on the back cast, and then you pull it on the, the or yeah, pull it on the back cast, and then you cast, and then pull it again, and it bends the rod more, and it shoots the line out. So all that line that you see bundled up and and you know on the ground or on the deck of a kayak or on the ground or in the water if you're wade fishing, all that line's going to get shot out. So then once you've got the line out, then you start stripping it. It's not like a conventional tackle where you sit there and reel it. You kind of strip it, strip it, strip it. You get that fish to bite, and you kind of set, and you pull back on the line. And depending on how big the fish is, if it's a big, bigger fish, it's going to pull the line out, and you just kind of slowly release the tension of the line until it's all out, and then you can reel it in. Or you can just sit there if it's a small fish, and you can just you know strip the line back in. I need to learn. I want to get I mean, on the paddleboard and catch a big old redfish. It's, yeah, I, I got to get back into fly into fly fishing. It's it's awesome. It's a great thing to do. And the the biggest the biggest thing I had when I first was learning how to do it was getting over the fact that you're not actually casting. You're casting, but you're not casting. You're letting the line and the fly do all of the work. You're just moving it back and forth. Um, Shane, I actually, I was curious, um, I haven't fly fished from kayak before, but I know there's multiple. That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> have, it, 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 at first it is, but you get used to it and it's easy. Um, Shane, what about sidearm casting from the kayak versus traditional overhead? Yeah, it seemed like I was doing that more as I, as I was going back and reviewing the footage. Uh, I definitely had like four or five conventional rods and reels set up behind me, so I couldn't do that back cast without fear of either hooking something coming out on the forward cast or, um, you know, uh, hooking tree branches or whatnot. So I was doing the sidearm cast a lot, it felt like, but at the same time, that feels more comfortable to me uh, mm -hmm. than doing like an up and down. Like I just don't, I don't do this a lot when I fish conventional tackle. I'm sitting there and I'm flipping it and I'm pitching it. So it's more of a sidearm approach just felt natural to me. All right, AJ, what are we going to talk about next? Oh, what are we going to talk about next? Well, someone else? Shane, well, Shane, you got you got anything else going on, Shane, while we got you on the, uh, the yeah, line? Matt, uh, Matt asked me why I why I choose, I believe it was Matt, why, why do I choose Cast King products? And the simple answer is you get the most quality out of your buck. And I stand behind that statement. I have uh, multiple rods, multiple reels by Cast King. I love the product that they put out, and I love the performance that goes into, the performance and, and, and features that go into a lot of the reels. Um, my favorite reel 
has to be the Spartacus. Um, I opted for the left-handed retrieve um, because being a bass fisherman, I'm doing a lot of flipping and pitching. And not having to, to waste time going back and forth switching hands has saved a lot of time and lets you cover more ground. So that's why I choose Cast King products. I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, you guys are probably... You know, being on the same team together, you're probably tired of hearing me say, but I have switched every rod and reel I've ever owned uh, that it, for bass fishing, and I'm switching all my catfish stuff over to casting. I mean, it's like you said, it's for the money that you spend, it is one of the most affordable products with a higher grade of, of quality. Uh, you get more bang for your buck, and just kind of like their slogan, casting keeps fishing fun. Man, when you ain't flat broke, you smile a little more, you know, and, and you end up having more. You know, a little bit more fun to get you out on the water, get you out there fishing, and have a little bit more fun. And, and man, I tell you what, I've 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 abused for the most part. Uh, of course, I I don't like to think that I'm really abusive on my stuff, but I mean, I, I use it, I torture test it. You know, I'm out there on the deck in my bass boat, and if I see a blow up, you know, you know, and I'm using a spinner or something, I'm gonna drop that rod and reel, pick up another one, and I will kind of drop it harder if you hug a big fish who's trying to land it. You throw your rod down and yank that sucker up. You know, they go over some abuse, you know, and, and, and I've, I haven't had any problems. I love them. I flat love my Casking products. I love the line, uh, not just Braid. I ha Casking is actually what got me to buying Braid. I never was a big Braid fan, um, but I like their mono. I like their copolymer, their fluorocarbons. I use a lot of plastic lines, and now the industry has been showing that Braid is becoming more and more popular as it's becoming more and more advancements through it, and Casting has put out some killer Braid, and I'm starting to spool up a couple of my rods to where I'm running Braid with like a copolymer or a fluorocarbon or a mono leader on them. So Braid's turning into the thing, and actually Braid is what put Casking on the map, and, and it's awesome. Affordable, awesome stuff. Yeah, and, and with was Cast King Braid, I first got into into looking at it after looking at their rods and I started looking at their line and um, I do a lot of heavy shark fishing and have, when I lived in Texas constantly running into issues with other brands like Power Pro just getting torn up by the by the heavy seaweed that hit the Texas coast and I was spending tons of money. I'm, I'm talking you spool a reel with a thousand yards of line and you go put that put that bait out there 500 yards and the seaweed tears off 400 yards of a thousand that's it's a lot of money when you're, when you're talking power pro so I started looking at other brands and I started looking at cast King and the price point for what I got for how much I could get I just figured you know what why not give this a shot what have I got to lose and ever since then I just I've completely swapped over. I I haven't used any other brand of braided line in probably about two and a half years. I've got a buddy that works at Walmart. He's actually one of the managers at Walmart, and he has been one of my biggest kind of critics. And he always beats me up, gives me gives me you know hell about uh, about fishing gear because he's like, man, why am I going to go online and order? some fishing gear or get this stuff. When I work here at Walmart, I got my hands on all of the, the line I could want with my discount. So I gave him a spool. I spooled him up a rod and gave it to him and said, check it out, take it out there. He ended up landing about a 35-pound catfish on it a couple weeks ago, and he ended up getting it stuck in some nasty reeds, and he had to pretty much just, just crank that and, and drag that sucker in and pull in, you know, not just this big 35-pound catfish, but a bunch of debris and weeds and stuff, and it, he was using the new Mega 8, and, you know, when he texted me the next day, you know, and showed me the pictures, he goes, he goes dude, okay, I'm going to have to get online. Tell me where I get this stuff. He goes, I like the Walmart braid. He goes, but Cast King has shown me that, that there is a better product out there, and it was actually cheaper than what he was paying for the products that he was getting at Walmart with his discount. That's saying something. For, for everybody who's just now joining in, um, we're doing a Cast King thing for iCast, and all these people is talking. Everyone, I put every all the links in the description. You can go check them out on YouTube or their social media pages. And just want to let you guys know that. And another thing, if you check out me and Shane, we pretty much fish the same setups. I'm talking about I'll watch Shane's videos, and he has the exact same reel and the exact same rod, and it's the funniest thing ever. I'm not so hard. <laughs> well, it's funny because last year at iCast, you you and him pretty much you know buddied up at the at the casting demo uh, spot that we had in the booth, 
And that was your guys' thing, man. And it turned into like this war. It was a battle royale <laughs> with the royale, you know, on, on it turned into a trick fest, man. You guys were out there killing it. And if you guys are going to be at iCast, check out all the different hashtags, iCast show, uh, iCast 2016. Of course, we are at booth 3069 in Orlando this year at iCast. And I'm sure you're going to find Shane and you're going to find Matt nose to nose seeing who's got the best flipping and pitching tricks. With these uh, bait casters in our uh, in our flipping demos. And speaking of braid, Tom just let us know um, on top oh. of all of the different types of braid that we currently have out, Casting is going to be releasing a, another version of braid. I, you know, each time they've brought out a new one, I've enjoyed it more and more. And I mean, I don't. I don't know what they can do to top this top this mega. I'm in love with the mega eight. Uh, and you gotta watch Tom. To see that. You gotta watch Tom, and you gotta watch the boys and girls of the casting man, because they are tricky. They've got so many cool things up their sleeve that they're working on. These people never sleep, and so I, I'm curious to see what we're because from what I understand, there's a couple things that we are not gonna know about at all until I cast, and that's all that they'll tell me. There's there's some stuff in store I cast for you guys some. Some cool, neat products, and I, it's killing me. i got to know what it is because, I mean, what else can you do, you know, that already hasn't been done, but Casking and a lot of these, you know, the different products with Mad Bite and stuff, they're, they're finding new products, new ways to do it, and, of course, exciting new designs. And it's, you know, I'm hoping this year we got an iCast Best of Show last year with some of the things that we're doing this year. Man, it I would be surprised. I, I, I can't wait to see another best of show sitting on the, on the mantle for uh, for casking you know you're talking about how can how can things be improved and you know them trying to figure out how can we one up something that's already been done what what else can we do different you know you get out there in the salt water and um, some of your larger reels and, and a few this that and the other you see a lot of conventionals that'll have two and even three gears but you never see spinning gear that has multiple gears on it to give you give you options in different situations but right here, Triton Duallis, let's see if I can get it up here close enough, has two gears. So That's why. He can go between, like I've got the 5000 series right here, and I'm able to select between a 5.4 to 1 and a 3.7 to 1 gear ratio. So you'll be able to, or... Spin back a little bit on the knob there. So, I mean, innovation. These guys are on top of their game. They're coming out with something new all the time. And I love it. I love seeing all the new gear they come out with, all the new all the new twists, uh, you know, something. Like, look at the stealth. Talk about what can they do differently. 100% carbon fiber reel for how much? It's, what, about... 50, 70, I think. Yeah, it's it's under sixty dollars. Yeah, and what other companies come out and, and sit there and give you a hundred percent carbon fiber reel that weighs weighs what it does and can do what it does that they're expanding on even further by packing more drag onto it for under sixty bucks. <laughs> Well, I, th I think we've got a couple other guests that were looking to come in here, so I think we're going to say goodbye to uh, to, to Jay uh, and bring some other people in. Jay, got anything you want to add before we uh, before we turn you loose and let you go and make some room for some other people coming in? I'm good. I'll be uh, I'll be in touch if anybody needs me. Are you going to hang out on in the uh, in the chat next here over here? Yeah. Uh, Right over here, watching me backwards where I'm pointing. But <laughs> answer questions, putting in your uh, two cents. Yeah. More hey Matt, half. I think uh, I think Tom's got a little segue for you to talk about here. You Ooh, yeah, must you, uh, you want to clue us in before John dips out? I see that. Okay, guys. I don't know if you can see the reel I'm putting up, but this is the new Spartacus Maximus. It's gonna be way better. Then the Spartacus, I mean, the Spartacus is going to be like the lower version if you want to get the 631 kind of thing. This is going to have way more drag. It's It's got a nice look to it, nice and sleek. I can't wait. I just want to get my hands on it. I want to feel the weight of it. I'm going to 
I just want to really put it to the test. I really want. I can't wait for this thing to come out. But this is the Spartacus Maximus. Is anybody seeing a picture of this? It was working earlier. I, it's it's not working on my on my phone here for for our live feed. So I'm sitting here staring at my computer, waiting for it to pop up in anticipation here. So if I'm not paying attention to what, all right, let me let me see if I can get that picture up for I'm everybody. I'm about this. Well, you know what? While he's trying to figure that out. Um, I do have something else here while he's trying to find that image that we could talk about from uh, Cascade. Dry bags. There it is. Oh. Here it is, guys. This is the one side with the handle. This is the right-sided one. And that's a pretty large handle on there. That's 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 one thing that I do like about these about you know a lot of the reels. I prefer a big handle. I mean, I've got some pretty big mitts, and that's nice. That looks like a very large handle there. She's pretty. But nice that sleek. is definitely Dude. a beautiful reel. Now, granted, this is still prototype images that we're seeing here, so they might change slightly when it actually releases to the public. It may stay the same. I'm sure it's going to have a lot more of the Casking logos and a little bit more information on it, but. It could possibly change just a little bit by the time we actually get our hands on it. You know what? What's really, really nice about those larger handles on there is um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm blown away by this. I, I, I think I've got some reels that need to be replaced here. I, I want it. But, I um, like it. The nice thing about those larger handles is once you start start to get into larger fish, you get you get tired. I mean, you go out there and and – it just feels insane when you're fighting a, a big fish with a short, stubby handle, and you get that extra power in from being able to crank a little bit further out. Um, I also noticed here on the on the handle side that the uh, star drag there's not as many uh, not as many cogs on it, which is nice because it uh, allows you actually to be able to feel it whenever you're sitting there trying to lessen or tighten the drag. Uh, that, that's a beautiful reel right there. And here, let me show you. You guys seen that picture? I want to try to show you. Get my camera back. This is the original Spartacus. So it's good. It's a six three one. I still love this reel. I still I got a left handed reel because I wanted to practice left handed, but it still got that big handle, and it really helps. It comes in. It just feels good. It makes it a lot less strenuous on your hands when you're reeling all day long. And I, dude, this thing—it's got some good drag to it. It's got 12-pound drag. This one, I think the new one's gonna have a lot more drag. So, and but the 631 still one of my favorite reels. This, I love the flat black and everything on it. And the Spartacus is one of my new favorites. I gotta get one in right, a couple in right-handed. I'm waiting for that Maximus to come out now. Hey Matt, can we get a uh, invitation sent out to our next guest here? I believe we have a. Uh... Talented young female looking to get in on our uh, on our feed here. We can. I've I've been trying to send her invites, but apparently it's not working for her. So we got to go by her phone or some. The joys of. But Tom uh, Tom said it's, this is how much drag difference it's going to have. This has twelve. The new one's going to have twenty two pounds of drag and that's a big casting double. reel. That is almost double. Ten to one shielded stainless steel ball bearings. Is this going to be saltwater friendly, Tom? Twenty-two pounds of drag. That's just you know that's I when I'm out in the salt and when I'm out in the surf and I'm throwing five ounce spoons and, and two plus two ounce spoons and big bucktails after after Jack Creval that are in the surf playing, I I, I refuse to use any reel that's got less than 15, 15 plus pounds of drag just because of the sheer force that they put out. I mean they hit like freight trains, but it is still water rated. Twenty-two pounds of drag, I'm um, that'll. That'll stop a lot of fish. The minimum drag I use on reels when I'm shark fishing, mind you, is 20 pounds. And you can catch a six, an easy six-foot shark with 20 pounds of drag, no more. So bear in mind, 22 pounds of drag, line capacity, but you can stop some serious size fish with 22 pounds of drag. Tom made the That's... comment. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm, I'm uh, amazed here. 
Tom made the comment that it's the last reel you'll ever need. For me, I'll take five. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna be. Li- I'm gonna literally be ripping the lips off fast with 22 pounds drag. Yes, man. It's we're, killer. Wow, 22 pounds. That's 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 awesome. I mean, you look at some of the uh, some of the 5,000 plus series reels that we've got that have that have that much drag, and the odds of needing it are slim to none. But wouldn't you rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it? I know I would. That's not going to leave my hands the eye cast as soon as he puts it down. No. No. <laughs> there, there better be more than one because I might, I might actually shove you out of the way to touch it. That sounded bad. <laughs> I'm kidding. We can touch it together. Uh, so, hey, you, have, you know what's one thing that we haven't talked about? Who wants to describe these? Which one do you want to describe? The, uh... the Cast King dry bags, man. There's one I haven't got yet. There's one I haven't got yet. And that is the one that I can't believe I didn't get. Was the uh, uh, the little, like the small one for your cell phone. And I don't know how I missed that when I was ordering the other day. But I, I mean, I really am dying. I want that dry bag. And what's crazy is I got the large one, too. This thing is huge. I mean, this is perfect for going out camping, hiking. You know, if you know you didn't get some weather, going to the beach. I mean, this thing is gigantic. I can all, well, I can't fit in here. But <laughs> you, you could put a lot of stuff in there. I mean, it is insane. Yeah, my, my wife is uh, seriously contemplating stealing mine for her beach bag so that we don't get sand and stuff like that in there. I mean, it's perfect. I'm good. I've got the 30 liter one, and this thing's massive. My my three year old crawled in it and started playing in it for a little while. <laughs> I've thought about doing one of my uh, my shower beer videos, joking around, and and actually having my dry bag full of ice <laughs> and pulling out the shower <laughs> beer with it. And <laughs> I'm kind of trying to come up with with funny creative ways to promote it and show people the awesomeness of this bag, but I don't know. <laughs> so, if you guys got any ideas? But you, uh, the tortures you want to see our drive bag go through, let me know. Put your phone in it and dunk it in everything. Dunk it in everything. <laughs> 55 you know, gallon or fry oil. oil. Water. Um, one <laughs> of the nice fry things it? about these drive bags is what they're actually made out of. They're made out of, uh, what is it, it's the 500D, yeah? CP, or PVC, if I'm not mistaken, right here. Yep, 500D PVC mesh. Which compared to a lot of uh, a lot of dry bags, they they're not mesh. They're just uh, a straight up polymer of some sort. So you get a little bit of extra strength in it with it being made out of a PVC mesh, as compared to just a straight up uh, polyvinyl material of some sort. Um, you know, it, I just this thing's this thing's huge. It can fit a lot. Uh, not to mention. <laughs> Spaceman there, AJ. There's different kinds of the dry bags. I got the large one and mine didn't get a handle. So you got different size, different kinds of dry bags. Yeah. The uh, 30 liter one comes with a nice handle. I mean, that's pretty big. Well here, hang on. Let's let's go for go for size value here. Now which one is that? Go back to that. let me see that one again. What? No. It's the it's the thirty liter one. I mean that's both my arms. That's the thirty hold the thirty liter up one again. Let me see it. <laughs> I got the thirty liter one too and it's man, I like yours. It's different. That's what I said mine's yeah. different. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The, the different colors are different styles too. I did not notice that. I'm gonna have to there give me a white one. Here, let's give a let's give a better idea. Trap some air in here. I got the black bag, so it'll air Don't itself up. Don't do the kind of air that we think you're gonna do, Dane. No, I'm not gonna pop it. <laughs> I didn't mean that kind of air. <laughs> <laughs> not the like air that's in your head. Yeah. All that hot air. There. That, if that gives you a little bit of an idea to how much the 30 liter bag will be able to hold. It's not too shabby. 
So, so what you're telling me is it's going to hold 30 liters. Well, <laughs> I think Maddie's having some issues. Uh, yeah, what you know are you what? Why don't you come over and we'll, we'll get 30 liters of beer? Mm. And we'll fill it with uh, we'll fill it with beer. We could do uh, some we'll go from there. You should just you fill it with the beer. Beer. We can do some Mad Bike casting reviews and see if we can get through the 30 liters of beer. Casking and Mad Bike are going to combine to have over 50 new items at the 2016 iCast. And all you people that are voting on items, be sure to stop by our booth and check them out. Because I don't want you guys to miss out on some some great products. Yeah, 50, 50 products. That's that's a lot. Fifty plus, and it's not even just fifty. It's fifty plus. So you think about everything that they've already come out with and already released uh, for twenty sixteen, and then you add another fifty plus on top of that. This is going to be a big year with a lot of big products. I mean, breaking into the fly market. Um, the dry bags, a new braid coming out, constantly coming out with new reels, um, you know, innovating and changing and modifying the reels they currently have. They're never stopping. These guys never stop. Tom, we, we constantly see him. He's running a million miles an hour all the time, always trying to bring the next best product to the fishermen. Next thing you know, I don't want to give Tate any ideas, but the next thing you know, they might come out with a fishing hovercraft by Casking. <laughs> hey, do we still have Paul kayaks? Yeah. Mm. We still got Paul sticking around. Let's see here. Maybe we can bring Paul back in. You know, we might be able to get him back in here. AJ's got a Casking kayak. I do. I do. I actually, not that this is. Oh wait a minute. Let's see. I got the casking kayak, and plus. while I'm at iCast, I'm getting my truck wrapped uh, with my automotive sponsors, and then as soon as that's done, uh, my boat goes in for a duplicate wrap, uh, but it is mainly going to be casking is getting front and center all down the side of my champion. It's going to be pretty sweet. It is. I can't wait. I don't know if you can see. Uh, I just literally got this. This is the proof of my board that goes in while I'm at iCast. That's what it's going to look like when it's done. So the, the Cast King uh, boat will be similar font to that and similar look to that. It'll match the truck. So kind of cool. I literally just got this right now. So <laughs> That's good. That's pretty sweet. And Les, to answer your question, I wish I had some drones to scout fish. That video on Facebook where they catch a fish off a drone, it, that makes me want one even more. You know what? Have, have you guys seen? Um, did you guys see that Lily drone? Uh, I wish I jumped on it. I haven't seen it come out. It was supposed to have been out by now. I don't know if they've had problems. But like a year ago, you could you could pay for it up front. It was like four hundred bucks, and you got you had to pay for it up front like a year ago. And they said it was going to be out August this year. Uh, and so that's you know a month away. And now I think it's like eleven hundred bucks. It went to eight hundred. Now it's like eleven hundred or something like that. But this is a it's a drone that you wear like a wristwatch and it that it zooms in or it you know it, it makes its focus on that watch. It's like a locator. And you just grab it, turn it on, throw it up, and it'll take up and fly and you can have it either follow you. So like if you're moving, it'll follow you, or you can have it do like a slow rotate where it focuses on you. And to me, I'm thinking, man, that would be killer, especially in some clear water fishing, you know, like on, on a on a kayak or a bass boat. That Lily drone looks awesome, and I'm really kicking myself in the butt for not doing the $400 up front. Uh, but, I mean, that was over a year ago. $400 to throw out there to hope the product comes out. I still haven't seen anybody with one yet or heard of it yet. I'm going to get on their website and see where they are. Maybe they'll be at ICAST this year. I, I want one like that will follow you around. I get on my paddleboard. You know, I've seen, I've actually seen they've come out with a couple of more models like that. Um, there's, there's one that they've got. They can, they can supposedly follow you around. It's actually got a camera built into it as well. That, um, 
it goes off of your phone and it, you, you fold it out and it, it looks like it's been 3D printed. It's all mesh. It's got four separate rotors on it and it's a, just a little bit bigger than uh, one of the a Galaxy Note whenever you actually fully fold it out. Really? Yeah, it, I just saw it the other day online, and um, I looked into the company, and the company's not even taking donations, or there, there's no Kickstarter for it. There's no nothing. It's just I, hmm. there's no information out about it aside from a handful of videos. There's not even a name for it yet, but there's already videos out about it. I think we should, the next Real Cast King comes out with, I think we should name it after AJ. Call it the Gore. The Gore. <laughs> you know, it was funny because the, the, the fact that we said, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say the name, but Tom actually had made a comment, or somebody made a comment in one of our, our group chats. And uh, and I was like, is that the name of the Real? And I wanted, I thought that was the best name in the world for Real, and I'm going to push for it. Uh, I don't want to say the name because... Uh, the gore lore. <laughs> the gore lore. No, but, uh, but anyhow, you know, I think uh, I think we've kind of gotten away from our, our whole point here. Uh, I think it's kind of time to go ahead and let everybody loose for the evening. Uh, we want to see everybody out there at iCast. Uh, we want to see people, you know, click the hashtags iCast2016, uh, iCast Show. Uh, of course, we want you to click on the hashtags CastKingUSA, CastKingBooth. 3069. That's where we're going to be at iCast. We've got a ton of different products coming out. Matt's talked about them. We've had Shane come in and talk about them. We've had Dane on here talking about them. We've got Tom in the comment section. We had Jay throwing out his opinions. And that's just what we've seen. There's a ton of other products that have been out for a couple of years now from Casting that we didn't talk about tonight that are fantastic, tried and true, everyday weapons that we have put into our arsenal for catching fish that has put Casting on the map. And at iCast 2016, we're going to do it again. We're going to put out a bunch more products. We're going to blow people away with some of the cool things out there. The industry has never been able to know what's hit them so far when uh, Eveside and Casking and Mad Bike came out. And we're taking the world by storm. We're, uh, we're for sale in just about every country. I mean, just hundreds and you know, thousands of people, millions of people have bought uh, the products. You know, And we're just blowing up. The sky's the limit. Uh, we're going to keep going. We're going to be a household name. Uh, and if you don't have Cast King in your boat, your kayak, or or in your uh, uh, your tackle box now with Mad Bite and some of the other products from Epsiden, you're missing out. You need to check them out. Go to epsiden.com. Go to Amazon. Go to Cast King. You will find us, uh, and you will be impressed with the products that we have. But of course, like I said, if you're gonna be in Orlando, if you're gonna be at iCast, you gotta stop by and check out booth 3069. Matt, Dane, please. If there's anything you want to add, let me know. Um, if you forget any of those hashtags, um, we're going to be on Instagram every day. If you have any, those hashtags are all in the description. Hashtag Cash King, hashtag Booth3069, hashtag iCash Show. I'll put them in here so you guys can remember. And please follow us. We're going to do some crazy photos. It'll be fun to follow us. You know, keep an eye on us because we are going to be doing several broadcasts live not on YouTube, but on different Facebook pages. We're going to be updating constantly during iCast on Instagram, Facebook. We're going to be trying to get this information out to you guys, out in the public, as quickly as we can, and as much as we can, as fast as we can, to, so that everybody who's not able to actually walk in those doors and get their hands on it or see these products in person we'll still be able to know about these products. We'll still be able to see these products just as quickly as everybody else in the industry. Um, so keep an eye on Cast King USA Instagram, Cast King Facebook page, Eposide and Facebook page, Mad Bites uh, Facebook page, and okay. keep an eye on those hashtags because we're going to be blowing it up from day one. And add us all on Twitter so you can follow us on Periscope because I'm going to do some Periscope videos. Cool. Well, thank you guys very much for joining in. Of course, if you're not already subscribed to Matt Rhodes Fishing, make sure you subscribe. Subscribe to me, AJ Gore. I'm the only AJ Gore on a boat that you're going to find on YouTube, not the dancing guy, although I do end up having a drink or two and start dancing. Uh, make sure you, uh, uh, you subscribe to Dane. Follow all of his stuff. Dane, what are, do you have a YouTube channel? You got anything going? 
I've been working on getting it going. I've only got uh, one video of me fishing up there. I mainly play around on Facebook and uh, get a lot of information out there through Facebook. I've been growing my Instagram. Um, but find me on Facebook, uh, Dane Creech. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Gizmos Baits. And you can find me here on YouTube under Gizmos Baits as well. And hopefully here soon I'll be uh, getting a lot of videos up. I've gotten... Uh, some cameras going so that I can start doing a little bit of fishing recording for you guys so as it uh, can bring the Florida fishing world to the rest of the world. I'm easy to find. You just look up AJ Gore on Instagram, Cast King, or Cast King, <laughs> Cast King. You just find me. <laughs> I'm Duncan. easy to find. I'm on YouTube, from Facebook to Instagram uh, to, to Twitter, it's just the same name, AJ Gore. Um, the only guy on a boat or fishing. Uh, it's not hard to find, and I've got all kinds of videos from fishing. Uh, I've got a couple hunting things to barbecuing to uh, my drunk tackle reviews. So you never know what you're going to find on my page. And of course, our host of the night, Matt Rhodes Fishing. Check him out. Follow him on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Periscope. I just follow the guy. Wherever he goes, I'm following. He's a stalker. Yes. You never call me back. <laughs> guys, all right, thank guys. You very much. Love you guys. I'm out of here. And y'all have a great night and a great Fourth of July and peace. <laughs>